everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I have for you today the March upgrade. It is very early on a Sunday morning, it's not even half past seven yet. I'm taking advantage of this time before the sun comes round and blinds me because it is beautiful outside this morning. As I said, this is the March upgrade. So this is the monthly art subscription box that comes from Germany. I have to say they've been very consistent of late. I'm quite excited to see what is in store for us this month. So a little bit like Scrawler Box, there are a few things that you get every month. You get a little magazine um, and a few sets of stickers. They always have a featured artist and there is an upgrade battle prompt as well for you to create an artwork with the contents of the box. So this is our, our bottle post and this is all of our information. So we'll look at that last because we don't want to spoil the surprise. Oh, now this is interesting. Right, first things first, let's take a look at the featured artist. So Upgrade call it a co-captain, keeping in with their sort of pirate type theme. And uh, this is in pencil, really excited about pencil. And it's a portrait, obviously. So let's have a little look here. Luisa Heri, oh my goodness, Luisa Heri, Dinoa, I am so sorry, so, so sorry. And she obviously specializes in portraits and you can see some of her artwork here. And I just, I love anything in pencil. For those of you that have been around for a little while, you'll know that. So I'm, I'm a little bit excited about this. Not so excited about the portrait thing, but we've got a little set of stickers here. And some of these stickers are just absolutely amazing. Um, you can submit your artwork to be made into a sticker and it tells you here who's actually made uh, the stickers, which is really nice as well. So if you've got ideas for that or you think that something would be suitable, by all means send it to them because they're always looking for stuff like this and it's very satisfying seeing your artwork somewhere else. Uh, this is from a Läufer, which are a German company, and this looks like an, a battery-operated eraser. Very similar to uh, the Derwent one. This is the one that I use normally, and basically the battery lives in there, and it's got a little button on the side. And this rotates a bit like an electric toothbrush, and it lets you erase. And they're great for really tight spaces and details, because obviously the tip's very small. These are replaceable. Um, I'll show you with this one when we, uh, when we open it up. And there's plenty of uh, replacement erasers there as well. Can you see the teeny tiny ones? So that's for really, really fine details. So that looks excellent. Uh, it's quite big though. Uh, yeah, okay, right, we'll try it. An Artline highlighter, Candy Crystal. Okay, this looks like a double-ended highlighter. Oh, oh my goodness. What, what is this? Oh, twist. Oh, oh, right, I see. Oh, twist. Mm, down up. Okay, this is supposed to twist, I think, like a lipstick, but it's not really doing anything. Okay. We've got two paint brushes. These are synthetic brushes and they are art space. So I think the Upcrate maybe have a sort of, um, I don't know what, what the right word is. Uh, I want to say an alliance, but they've obviously partnered up with art space because we've had quite a few supplies there. And it looks like we've got a number four round. And we've also got this dagger shaped brush, you know, the angled brushes too. So let's take this out here. I actually really like synthetic brushes. I find they're easier to control. Um, and that's, that has got a lovely pointy point on it. I do love a pointy point. Now, the importance of a pointy point on a paintbrush is it doesn't matter what size the actual brush is. If it comes to a fine point like that, it means you can use it for detail as well as larger areas. So that is absolutely lovely. I'll take a little look at this dagger brush. These are great for, um, for you know, getting in some nice straight lines and some angles as well. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, this doesn't have a size on it. Oh, we've got... Don't roll away. We have a little uh, jotter pad here. It is stitched on the, the side. It's not stapled. And we have an, another voucher for art space as well. You get 15% off some of their goodies. Now, this paper feels quite textured, which lends itself to pencil. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to take a guess at like uh, 160 GSM, maybe 100, and, yeah, 160, I'm going to say, just at a guess. Let's see if I'm right. So there looks to be quite a lot of paper in there as well. And there's more. A sumo grip. So a Sakura Sumo Grip, this is a mechanical pencil. It's a chunky monkey. It um, just functions like normal. I don't know if it is that an eraser. Yes, it is an eraser on the top. It is covered in 
graphite. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but I'm assuming that this unscrews and you can replace the you can replace the lead as it runs out. It does actually just look like a ballpoint pen if you look at the tip there. It will be it'll be quite interesting to see how I fare with this, bearing in mind that I've got a bit of a dodgy hand. Uh, I tend to find that things like this are more uncomfortable than normal pencils, but that's definitely worth trying out just from my perspective. Um, we've also got oh, what is this? This is an M and R. I don't I don't I don't know what this is. It looks like a pen lid. Has it come off something? Okay, we'll find out. And maybe it's to protect your pencil tip. We do have a set of pencils here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we've got a set of uh, Viking Artist Graphite pencils in a selection of grades. So we've got a 2H, so that, that would be like your sketching pencil. That's the hardest one. And then we've got a 2B, a 4B and an 8B. So they're getting progressively softer and darker and that's for your shading and texture and stuff. I'm so excited by this box. And we've also got a white Jelly Roll 05 and this is obviously for highlights or outlining, that kind of thing. Um, I don't get on too well with gel pens in general, but when I do use them, I do quite like the Jelly Roll. So that's a nice high quality item there as well. So let's take a look at the bottle post and see what's what here. And hopefully it will tell us a little bit about the supplies. Okay, so the Loifer Electric Razor. A recommended retail price is nearly 13 euros, so about 10 pounds, give or take. This electric eraser, you can quickly and precisely erase large and small areas. Depending on the sensitivity and pressure, you can also create light shades, set highlights and work out fine details. The changing system enables two different eraser thicknesses. That's what we were talking about earlier. The big ones and the little ones. And you get 13 large and 10 small tips included. That'll last you a lifetime. Like, unless you're doing like several portraits every day, the, those eraser tips are going to last you a long time. In case you do run out, an assortment box with a spare eraser is available separately, so you can buy replacements as well. I'm assuming we'll need to put batteries in it. That's the only thing. Electric eraser test area. I love it. Uh, okay, so the German subscribers are getting batteries in with the actual box. Uh, there are shipping restrictions on things like batteries, so it makes sense that they're not in the box for people outside of Germany. Okay, the Viking Pencils, Rollo Artist Drawing Pencils. Made in Denmark, the Viking Rollo Artist Drawing Pencils consist of finest Californian cedar wood, diameter of 6.9 millimetres, and its hardness is indicated with a coloured label. So yeah, the ends are actually dipped, I didn't mention that earlier. If I show you them this way, the ends are actually dipped to, like they're colour coded for the, the grade of pencil, so that's quite handy at a glance if you've got them sitting about. Okay, the Jelly Roll, the basic white gel pen. Uh, the, these are quite widely used, I'm sure most of you are familiar with them. Um, jelly Roll is the world's best gel writer thanks to uh, ink with water based pigment. Smooth writing results, and it's one thing I find, and I don't know whether it's a left-handed thing or not, but I find the likes of the Jelly Roll uh, skips a lot less when I'm using it compared to some of the other popular white gel pens. Um, so, but I th that that may just be, you know, a left-handed thing. But I know that some people don't go on with this, and I think that the gel pen thing is very much down to preference and just what works for you as an individual. Okay, the Sumo Grip Mechanical Pencil. This special grip is ergonomically comfortable to hold. The lead is protected from breakage by a metal tube at the tip of the classic, easily replaceable eraser can be found at the end of the pen. Right, I'm just wondering if this... Um... Oh yeah, right, okay, it just pulls out. Oh, oh it's huge! <laughs> expecting it to be that big. We, we really are, um, we really are spoiled for choice on the old eraser front this month, aren't we? Goodness me. Okay, we'll just pop that back in there. <laughs> right, let's talk about the paper. I'm always interested in the paper. The naturally white paper of the art space sketchbook is particularly suitable for all dry techniques, pencil, charcoal, chalk, etc. It doesn't actually tell you about the paper. That's something that really, really annoys me. Like, I want to know what I'm using. I'm going to have to look this up and find out. Okay, can't find any information. Just did a quick look there. I can't find anything imminently, which is a little bit disappointing. It feels like nice paper, though, so... Okay, the gimmick is back. Uh, the m &R Extreme... Oh, it's a pencil sharpener. The m &R Extreme Pencil Sharpener Cap Single Hole can be used as a pencil extender and as a practical protector cap. Well, how do we do this? Oh, okay, right, so the blade's in here. To be fair, that's not much of a pencil extender. Um, pencil extender meaning that when you've sharpened it down to almost nothing, you can pop it in and 
you know, it means you can use your pencils right down to the stub. I would just stick with a normal pencil extender myself. This is actually quite a handy wee gadget. Um, and when you're, you can turn it round so that it's all kind of like tucked away again. But that is actually a blade in there. That's, that's really cool. I like this. I do like the M&R sharpeners. Uh, one of the ones I keep in my sketching pencil case is the Brass Bullet sharpener. It's one of my favourites. Um, the blades on them are really good. And um, with the, the more sort of standard sharpeners, you can change them out. But the M&R blades are, are quite sort of robust and they, you, you don't have to change them out too often. So I'm a huge fan of stuff like this. That's quite a dinky little device. I like it. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm genuinely impressed. Okay, so we've got a little bit about the, the co-captain here and telling you a little bit about their art process and what they're like as a person. Uh, special tips by Louisa. Um, just talking about the different hardnesses of the pencil. Mechanical pencil for details like eyebrows and eyelashes. The reason that that's a good idea is you get a very standard line width because of the 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 diameter of the actual lead that's in these. Obviously it's very, very small. It's very easy to, to repeatedly put in things like eyebrows. I do use it if I'm drawing in pencil, usually just in my sketchbook, um, but when I'm drawing animals, I do like to use a mechanical pencil for animal fur and whiskers as well. So yep, I totally back that up. Okay, the eraser, you can use it for make, fixing mistakes, but also for creating highlights and the same for white pen. So here we've got the Unexpected Friends. Uh, this was the Upcrate Battle from, I think it was January. These are really, I've seen some of these already on um, Instagram. I absolutely love this one. That's just so creative. It was really, really nice. <laughs> this little dude's found a frog. I really like that box as well. And that was the box that uh, that spawned my, my cow and bird combination, who's now been made into a sticker. So that box was definitely, definitely worth it. Okay, so we've got the we've got a little quiz here, and we've got our sailor of the month, which is Crickle Critzel. Now, interestingly, uh, I already follow this person on Instagram, <laughs> so yeah, he they do a lot of um, Disney characters and things. He's doing like a series of that just now, and the artwork's just absolutely great. Definitely worth a follow, and quite posts quite regularly on Instagram as well. So if you're looking for that nice flow of inspiration, definitely, definitely one to watch. And I'm really glad that he has made it into the magazine as Sailor of the Month. How to make a pencil portrait do's and don'ts. I definitely need to read this because I don't do portraits. Um, I think most of it, there, there's tips here on pencil drawing, so um, I'm kind of okay with that. I think I'm, I think I'm good with that. Uh, guidelines for proportions and make sure the eyes are looking in the same direction or else you end up with derpy eyes. Uh, hair clumps together. Hair's difficult to draw, definitely. When doing contours for the face, do it softly. Um, you don't want any like really harsh lines unless that's a stylistic choice for you. What not to do when drawing realistic portraits. No dark outlines. Don't draw straight eyelashes. Don't add dark lines between each of the teeth. And when you're shading, make sure not to draw in all different directions as those pencil lines are going to be visible in the final piece. That's some pretty sound advice. Okay, Upcrate now have a newsletter, so you can uh, sign up for that and get information on new special offers, latest developments, and receive exclusive coupon codes for the shop. Okay, so we've got the quiz time. Now, more importantly, on the back page, we need to find out what the battle prompt is going to be. And the prompt is Colourless Beauty. Uh, that's a very open prompt. I like it very much. And I don't think we're going to have many problems trying to come up with something for this, especially since it's in graphite pencil, which is my absolute favourite. Uh, this will be as a separate video. I do alternate month on month with the scholar box and the upcrate and take turns at doing something straight off the cuff and then doing one as a separate video. And it's just so I can retain some enjoyment from doing this. Um, it's nice to be able to plan out a drawing, um, but it's also nice to have the pressure and think on my feet as well. So the upgrade battle will be a separate video, usually in about a week's time, so you can keep your eyes peeled for that. Right, I suppose we better get on and test out some of these supplies. Alrighty, so it's a little bit later in the day. I had to abandon ship earlier because cows, nothing changes. Uh, yes, yeah, so one of the things I didn't point out earlier was that as a replacement for the fact that we didn't get batteries because we're outside of Germany, that's why I got the two paintbrushes and this rather um, offensive coloured <laughs> highlighter. 
So I'll not be including them in testing out the supplies. The other thing that really tickled me as well is with the Loifer eraser, uh, they've actually chopped the top of the packaging off and it's so that it would fit in the box. Because if it had the um, the retail loop that's on the top, you know, so it could hang on a bracket, it wouldn't fit in the box. So that that's exactly the kind of thing I would do, uh, ever resourceful, but that, that just really tickled me for some reason. Anyway, so I would like to try out this mystery paper, seeing as I don't know anything about it. So we'll just get this folded over and we shall test out some of these supplies. Uh, I did go and find some batteries as well so that we can stick them in our eraser to try out. So I'm really curious about this mechanical pencil because I generally don't do very well with things. And these barrels are supposed to help, but I don't know, I don't know why, but they just generally don't, my hand doesn't like them. <laughs> So let's just have a go. I'm assuming that it's uh, an HB lead that's in this. It tends to be with these mechanical pencils unless it's, you know, specifically stated otherwise. So let's just have a wee quick look and see if it tells us. I don't think it does. Uh, no, it doesn't. But it is a 0 0.5 millimeter uh, lead that's in it. I don't know. It's funny because I just think that with a pencil, I just all, I'm so used to a slim barrel and it feels quite weird having such a big... Um, you know, something so chunky in my hand. I mean, uh, mechanical pencils are good for uh, line uniformity as well, and obviously you don't have to sharpen them. That is quite soft. Um, it feels soft for an HB anyway. This might be a similar situation to the pencil we had in one of the other subscription boxes just recently. The grip's okay. It's not really my cup of tea, but it's not terrible or anything. And the eraser in the top... Uh, again, the, the erasers on these pencils don't tend to be anything to shout about, but we'll try that out along with the uh, the, the battery powered one. And then we've got these Viking pencils. Hi, woo. Little Jack Russell's flapping her ears about. That was the noise. She's come to see me. So we've got a 2H, which is going to be our sketching pencil. So a slightly harder lead which is going to allow you to keep these lines quite fine and also quite clean if that's what you want. I am not a clean sketcher, that doesn't really come into my vocabulary. Um, but these are uh, generally easier to erase than, um, than some of the softer grades, you know, like into the B grades. So you can see there the lines are quite crisp. You're not really going to get an awful lot of shading, but again, I feel as if this pencil's like on the darker side. Uh, you know, I would maybe even put that in at a, a, an H. It could be the paper though as well, to be fair. This paper has got a little bit of texture on it. It is taking the graphite pencils, like, you know, it's like hugging it into its bosom. Uh, so that may have something to do with it. So we've got the 2B. So you can see instantly that's a lot darker than what's been going on next door. And I'm not putting any particular amount of pressure on it. A 2B for quick sketches and in my sketchbook if I'm just sort of messing around. A 2B is my go-to pencil um, because it, it's it's still firm enough that you you know you can put your, your sketch lines and everything in. It's not too dark for that. They will still erase. It lets you get in that little bit of shading as well and just get some contrast in. So you can see we've got, you know, quite, there's a reasonable amount there. But when you see it next to this mechanical pencil from earlier, you're like, mm, I don't think this is an HB. <laughs> this is purely guesswork though. Okay, so the next one down is the 4B, so that should be softer and darker again. Now naturally, when you go down this, um, this graphite scale, the softer the pencil is, the less it keeps its point. Um, just because it, it is soft and it wears down pretty quickly so you'll keep having to sharpen them. I have done a whole video just on graphite pencil grades so if it's something you want to learn a bit more about than what we're doing here I'll link that in the end card and you can go and have a wee look at that if it's something that might be of use to you. So you can see we're starting to get some really rich shades here excellent for darker areas or for cast shadows as well and then finally we've got the big daddy which is the 8b and uh, this is just oh my goodness and the, again the paper's taken this absolutely beautifully so really happy with that and i love 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 that textured paper coming through there that makes me so happy that's just that's just like gem gem territory right there 
So you can see the difference in how dark they are as well. Um, an 8B, I would only really use, um, when I'm doing graphite dog portraits, I tend to use an 8B for the darkest areas, so like inside the nostrils and part of the eyes as well, especially if it's a young dog. So there we go. So we've got quite a lot of variety in our graphite, which is what we want if we're going to be doing a, a graphite portrait. This is a great selection of pencils. And now just comparing this, if we look along the line here, I would say that this is sort of somewhere in between the two and the four so you could call it a three but I don't know um I, I don't know technically what they've decided it is so I just want to try the eraser on the end of the mechanical pencil so I'm just going to take a wee cut through there and that's actually quite nice it's it's very soft there are a wee bit of um a little bit of the shavings are coming off but that's to be expected and that's cut through that quite well so let's try in this darkest part here it's not bad at all. It's unlikely that you would use that on such a dark pencil. Um, you know, you're thinking more of like when you're using this particular pencil, you can just flip it over. I like the fact that it is a bit chunkier uh, than some of the other ones. The flimsier ones, I tend to find they can snap off sometimes or you get bits, you know, like chunks come off the corner. So that's fairly sturdy and it's just in fitting with the pencil. So that's actually quite a good for an end of pencil eraser because sometimes they, you know, product, products like that fall down because the eraser's rubbish. So that one's quite good. Right, let's, let's, let's get into this bad boy. Let's see if I can just maneuver this out here. Damn you, cheap Ikea scissors. I love my Ikea scissors, I'm just kidding. Okay, so there's our replacement erasers. The instructions are all in German. Uh, my German's not, my re reading in German isn't too bad, uh, but I'm pretty sure we can deal with this without worrying about worrying about the instructions. It's a fairly straightforward piece of kit. There are there's two plastic inserts now. I'm assuming that that's for the the smaller erasers, and I'm assuming that this will just unscrew. This box of batteries made me laugh. This is um, a pack of Energizer batteries. That is 32 AAA batteries. I was expecting a box like this big. It made me chuckle when they arrived. And negative terminal. Uh, oh, a little satisfying click there. <laughs> so that's spinning round pretty quickly. The, this feels odd to me, but it's just because I'm used to the Derwent one, which is sort of shorter and chunkier. If I just hold them up side by side to show you, uh, you know, there is a huge difference and uh, the batteries in this one sit side by side rather than one on top of the other, like that. Um, so that's the, you know, the difference in the shape, but they're powered exactly the same way. So I'm assuming the battery life would be quite similar, um, but this just feels a bit odd in your hand because you're kind of like back end heavy, but that is something you get used to. It makes quite a satisfying noise as well. Um, Jock doesn't like it because he thinks it's a bee and he doesn't like buzzy things. Uh, right, okay, so just before I start erasing with it, let's take a look here. I see I'm assuming these plastic inserts are for the the smaller ones because th this casing, this metal casing here, it just pulls out and you can see it pings open there and what that lets you do is as it wears down, you can push it up and then when, when you push it back into the actual pen, it nips it a bit like a pair of tweezers so you can use the full length of the of the eraser. Again, if I just show you the difference, you can see there. So this this is for the little diddly ones and they're so tiny. That is like some serious precision. <laughs> right, okay, let's see how thin of a line. This is for highlights, like this is what you would use for highlights. So let, let's try on the later one first. Oh, it's like being at the dentist. <laughs> so you can see I've cut a line through that, no problem. And it's the, the eraser itself is only taking a little bit of wear, so that's good as well. So let's see if we can... That's done a fairly good job through the 4B. There we go, on a, se on a second attempt, that's taken away quite a lot of that. Okay, so let's go back to our larger tip now. Okay, so we're back to the chunkier tip now. So let's have a go with the 8B. Ooh, I didn't like that. Okay, even if you put a tiny bit of pressure on this, it stops the, the tip. And that's pretty dusty. See if I just do that, can you see all of that? Again, it's done a fairly good job of taking it away. So if you are looking to lighten up some areas, then this is a really good deal. Let's try it on one of the lighter ones. There you go, it's almost completely taken away some of the lighter pencils. 
So that's pretty good as well. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I'll try over here on more sumo. Okay, yeah, that's, an, that's a nifty bit of kit. I like that very much. I don't know whether I would be swayed away from a Derwent. Uh, let's just do a little comparison. So same sort of thing, same level of erasability as the Derwent, but you had to have the added advantage of you've got the smaller tip that you can use as well. Okay, that's uh, fairly interesting. Okay, so the other thing we've got here are the, um, the, the white jelly roll pen. And see, this is kind of standard standard fair goodness me these generally don't go down terribly well on top of graphite you've got to kind of work at it a wee bit and i'm going to show you what i mean when you're going to use one of these always prime it or start it off on a, on a scrap piece of paper just to make sure it is rolling um this is quite a fine one and i always use a colored post-it so that i can see what you know see that it's definitely coming out you would be using this for highlights of some description and you can see that it's picking up the graphite i don't even know if you can see that um and it's just muddying up so and there there's the graphite there i've just uh, i've just swirled the pen round and you can see it's picked up the graphite so not great over the top of pencils and i could have told you that before we even started here because obviously i've experimented with this before but what you can do is if you let it sit for a little minute you can see it's starting to dry there I've got a little circle in it, like, um, like an apostrophe or a comma that I've done there. If you let that dry, um, it shouldn't take too long. You can go back in and you can build it up in a couple of layers. Now, as long as you don't press too hard, then it won't scrape off what's underneath. Um, and if you do that a couple of times, you will get some sort of highlight. For the sake of the um, the the upcrate battle, I don't think this pen's going to be much use to me, if I'm perfectly honest because I am struggling to get it to do anything on top of this. It's just picking up the graphite. So I would have said that's a poor choice in my book. It's not something I would use anyway if I was doing a graphite drawing because graphite is very, very transferable, especially when you get to the softer grades like this. That, you know, you're you're kind of fighting a losing battle with a rollerball pen. However, I'm loving the size of the nib. I can zoom out the nib again. Um, I'm enjoying the size of the nib on this. It's nice to have a really, really fine point on a gel pen, but see, just no, not in this circumstance. But still, a nice item to have. So that is our supplies. I have to say, I love the paper and the pencil combination. That really appeals to me. Again, I like texture and I absolutely adore working in graphite. So um, I'm really pleased with that. The Jelly Roll pen is a good product. I just don't think it goes well with what we've got here. The Sumo pencil is surprisingly nice. I, it just feels a bit awkward for me, but that's probably more to do with my hand issues than the actual item itself. And if you're looking for something a wee bit sturdier, then this is definitely definitely a good shout and i'm impressed with the razor as well it's it's doing fine and dandy and i like the fact that you've got the option of the two eraser tip sizes because that that to me is more useful for highlights than our jelly roll friend here i just wanted to try this little uh this sort of portable pencil sharpener obviously i don't need to do it with uh, with these pencils so i was going to try and find a, a bluntish pencil in my collection yeah, there we go. What have we got here? A, a, two, a 2B. There's a surprise, just what I was talking about earlier. So I'm quite curious as to... Yeah, I, I'm a bit scared to do this. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's fabulous. That is, that's almost like a James Bond pencil sharpener, isn't it? Because it just looks like a pen top, regular pen top. But the other thing as well is if you are sort of out and about and you have sharpened your pencils, you can just pop that in there and it'll sit quite snugly on it and it'll protect the, the, like the point on your pencil for you. So yeah, I really like this. This is quite a cool little bit of kit actually. I'm gonna show this to Mr. Jim. He'll like this because he would carry that about in his overall pocket. Um, he, he prefers to use a pencil because if it's wet outside, and he's having to write cow numbers down or whatever, your ballpoint only lasts so long. So this is a farmer sharpener. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm really impressed with the box. I know that subscription companies are reluctant to have a graphite box because it doesn't seem all that exciting because it's just graphite pencils. And that tends to be something that most of us have lying about the house. Okay, not to this extent. Um, and I think Upcrate have been really brave doing this as a box. And I like the fact that they've done it. Um, aside from the fact that, you know, it's something that I enjoy anyway. But the addition of the eraser and this cool little James Bond pencil sharpener has just made this 
a really nice little box. I'm looking forward to the Upgrade Battle as well, which is Colourless Beauty. As I said before, that will be a separate video in about a week's time, so you can keep your eyes peeled for that. I hope you have enjoyed looking through this box with me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the box and what you think of what is inside this month. I want to thank you very much for watching. Thanks for sticking until the end, and we shall see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So have a good day, everyone. Stay safe. Bye for now.